Hey guys, Steve Taylor here for Northern Wilderness Bushcraft. Just thought I'd bring you a series of videos actually. Um, I've been thinking about doing it. It's, it's September now and I'm thinking the Halloween build-up's coming. <laughs> now, I don't know if many of you guys out there, even on my channel, even like a few spooky stories and things like that. But I do, especially around the campfire in the evening. Now, I'm not going to be doing... I might do. I'm thinking of maybe doing one haunted camp out maybe. Uh, I know quite a few haunted woodlands, especially one with old ruins and pagan burials in. So I'm thinking about maybe spending the night at one of them for years, um, just doing a bit of bushcraft, but also telling some of the ghost stories of the actual woodland while being there on a solo. It'll be quite an interesting night, I think. Anyway, the reason I'm bringing this video is this, I'm going to start a new series. And my series is called The Great Myths and Legends of British Trees. So it's trees in the British Isles. These trees are such as the Witch's Hazel, a fantastic tree which we're going to look at today. Each one of these trees obviously has bushcraft uses or survival uses or any kind of woodland outdoor use really. What I want to do is bring to you some of the more lesser known facts. There's many videos out there on YouTube all about how these trees can assist you. What I want to do is give you some of the history, you could say from the Celtic perspective, you could say from the mythological perspective, something that true woodsmen would have knew. Now the, the thing with this is, I'm at the belief that when I see the many trees around us, each one of these trees, or like Rhea Mia says, they're all great and ancient old friends. And this is very much true. When I walk through the forest or the woods and or scrub or wherever, I recognise the different trees, what they can do for me, what I can do for them. I understand how soil acidity works and what kind of plants and trees will take to this to regenerate wastelands and place damage by human interaction. It can also tell me what kind of things I can find there, what kind of fruits and foods, herbs and plants and medicinals I can find in these areas. Now what I plan to do in this series is go through each one of these, give me some basic information. There's lots of information out there on the tree identification. So I will cover a little brief part of this, but predominantly what I would like to do is give you some of the lesser known facts, the myths, the legends, and why they're there. Now don't just, just throw that to one side and think myths and legends are something that he is saying, you know, rubbish. It's not true. Our ancestors have passed on the way of the wise, the woodland way, if you like. The way the woodsman would be taught would be to learn these myths around fires, the same way we talk about them at the bushcraft moots and things like that. We teach our younger people, our younger people, all about these ancient stories. There's many a poisonous plant and tree out there, and these trees can often be known as the tree of death. Stark reminder when you see certain trees like the yew tree in graveyards, it's a reminder that the tree can be deadly. These myths and legends lie within our ancient history, it's part of our heritage, and as part of that, we'll take you on a small journey, and let's have a look over the early part of autumn, into late autumn, into early winter, as we cover some of the most and well-known, spooky, mythological, and generally interesting trees of the Great British Isles. Now the first tree I'd like to start with today is the hazel tree, often referred to as the witch's hazel. You might have even seen this in beauty spas and shops. It's quite funny how that can make it into the modern marketplace today and people don't really as associate two things together. But the hazel tree has long had a legend connected with witchcraft, sorcery and things that go bump in the night. Let's have a look at the hazel. First of all, let's start with the hazel from this perspective so you can have a quick look at it. Now the hazel is a tree that needs to be copsed, controlled. It's a fantastic tree for everything you want to do in bushcraft. It's what I call one of the many green trees or a safe tree. To me, a green tree doesn't represent just the colour of these leaves, but also a tree that is safe. We have amber and I also have red as colours, colour guides to what my trees are. With this specific tree, this tree is ideal for many different uses. It has very long, straight branches, trunks. We'll show you a few more of those. Here you can see a young hazel tree. And in this young hazel tree, you get an idea of how thin these branches can be. They can be used for many different uses. One of the many uses I use these for is often when I roast meat. I'll take something like this very far back guy in the middle over here. The very far one, we can see him just over there. There he is. That's about the perfect size at the back there. And I would use him for spit roasting any kind of meat, a nice chunk of gammon ham or roast pork or something like that. And what I generally do is remove all the outer bark off the tree and then split it halfway down the middle. 
So I'll create a prong like this, almost, coming from the branch. It needs to be a long prong, roughly, I normally keep it roughly about half a feet in the middle, or like at least into the middle of the wood. From that point there, I would make sure all the box obviously removed. Uh, I can stab my meat straight through, and then obviously it keeps the meat locked into place. We'll make sure you this on another video. Now with the hazel, the bark's very easily recognisable. Some people often, and new bushcrafters, get this mixed up with a birch, and you can see kind of why. You've got these lines that run through, which are very similar to birch in a way, but look at this beautiful golden brown colour. It's like a smooth colour. It is beautiful indeed. Now, the wood under this as well is also a very dark wood until you get into the actual main part, part itself. So just below the skin here, below the bark, you will find a darker shade. This here is the here's a leaf. As you can see, the shape on this, they're very, very wide with a point towards the end. You can see the way the leaf comes out from there. One thing I find truly amazing about the hazel tree is its connection to ancient mythology. You see, this tree is well revered by the Druids and Pagans. And it's a beautiful tree, and you can see why. Now this also has its mythical stories related all the way to the fact that Merlin's staff was supposedly made from hazel. Witches' wands made from hazel. Carrying a hazel twig or keeping it above your door also supposedly repelled evil spirits back in the day. It's amazing to think that this tree would have once held such amazing regard to people. People who actually physically feared things they did not understand. One of the great things about this tree is the tree of knowledge. Not many people realise, but this tree has the hazelnut. And the hazelnut, basically, it's meant to represent concentrated wisdom and poetic inspiration. It's suggested by a similarity between the, the Gaelic word, or the Gaelic word of many people may have heard this, for the nut, which is kano. Kano means nut, or hazelnut. However, in the Celtic tradition, the ancient word for wisdom, which is actually kind of similar, I think kind of makes sense, the word for wisdom is kanokash. Kanokash is C-N-O-C-A-C-H. And I could be spelling that incorrectly or saying that incorrectly. But the tree itself is connected to that. Supposedly, one of the things about the tree is this, is that once, long time ago, basically it dropped its hazelnut down into the water, down below. And a salmon, supposedly also revered by the Druids, ate these hazelnuts. And these hazelnuts were con packed with wisdom. And down in the murky waters there, I can just say now, see a beautiful salmon. Not actually, but I can imagine him being there, eating these hazelnuts if he could. And you can kind of see where the mythology comes from. The myth says that the salmon would grow orange spots. The wiser the salmon, the more spots there were to eat that fish, which was revered, meant you would gain its wisdom, which is an amazing thing. In Ireland, there's also the story, very similar, of a salmon fish who also had the same thing related to him. Supposedly, one young man was once told that he had to cook the salmon. As he was doing this, the salmon, which had been a recipient of the magical nut, a druid master, in his bid to become all-knowing, turned round to the young boy and says, boy, I want you to cook this salmon, prepare for me, but you must not eat it. However, as the young boy cooked the salmon in oil, some had splashed on his leg, on his thumb, on his hands. He licked it from his thumb quickly, putting it in his mouth, thinking that it would cool the burn. That man became well known. You see, he absorbed the wisdom. The lad was called Fionn Macumhal, and he went on to be one of the most heroic leaders in Irish mythology. One thing amazing about this tree is that the Old English word from Anglo-Saxon, Haselknut, Hasel meaning cap or hat, thus referring to the cap or leaves on the nut on the tree. Hazel trees frequently grow as a clump or slender trunks, and when they do adapt a one trunk and canopy tree shape, they readily respond to copsing. Now copsing is quite important to be done. As you can see, this tree hasn't been copsed, it's been snapped away. But copsing is something where you need to trim it, the tree down to help it grow. And this is how you get this base of many different roots coming up from the tree. And this is one way to identify it. You'll see from the base coming up, you'll have all these very straight, slender, and even sometimes slightly fatter limbs. Sometimes these can be all mottled and old when they're extremely old. And also you can identify it by the leaf. It's extremely important to copse the hazel tree. And you need to do this 
at the right time of the year. And the reason being is that it will extend the lifespan of the actual tree itself. Now the hazel has long been a favourite wood from which to make staffs, stangs. Whether for ritualic, druidic use, for ancient pagans, even modern pagans and Wiccans today. For medieval self-defence as staffs, favoured by pilgrims or to make shepherds crooks and everyday walking sticks. Even when this grows as a young shoot, people start to bend them. And this is how you get the crook, the turned part of the hazel. It is done by turning the hazel from being very young and it results in a beautiful shaped wood. Now the tree itself, especially these slender thin bits, are used for making hazel hurdles or waddles. These are a basic fence made of this stick. Believe it or not, this wood is so strong, when it's twisted, I've actually used this to pull out a Land Rover 4x4 connected to two bull bars and actually made a series of eight knot styles by twisting the wood around each other. And I'm sure there's another video out there online that actually shows you this being done as well. And it's where I got the original idea from once when we did get stuck. The hazelnut, now long gone, is a high source of protein. It's a fantastic nut to try and capture if you can before the squirrels get their hands on them. They're a beautiful nut indeed to have, especially as a nice treat but eating them raw can lead to a very upset stomach. Often the hazel tree will be turned into hazel bread by grounding the nuts and mixing them with other flowers and things like that. The hazel nut also has magical properties, so it's believed. It's believed the hazel nut is used by seers who choose to see into the other worlds, the darker side, people who wish to read fortunes. Seers gaining nuts of wisdom as they call it, which most likely a metaphor for such heightened states of consciousness, although the more literal minded have argued that this expression could refer to a potent brew made from hazel that had a psycho, well, psychotropic effect. As to the theory, there are many numerous references to the drinking of hazel mead in early Irish literature and many references in Scottish and Druids eating hazelnuts to gain prophetic powers. The word, Anglo-Saxon word for the tree of hazel was hassel, which originally signified a baton of authority. Identifying the hazel leaf, now it's pretty simple really, the leaves are arranged alternately around the stem. They are most round in shape but broadest near to the apex, which is the tip of the leaf. Also notice on here, if I try and show you this and keep this very still, you can see how green the buds are. Oh, it's getting blown about there like a the leaf does. There we go. So that is the bud right there for the hazel tree. Flowers and fruits, the male and female flowers are found on the same tree. The yellow male catkins open in early spring, sometimes known as the lamb's tail. And I find this to be a great symbol, a sign of when nature's about to burst into life. And it seems to be one of the earlier plants or one of the earlier flowers to come out in early spring. It's also worthy to note that the female flowers appear on the same branches as small pink crimson fruits. Now the hazel is a pliable wood which remains pliable even when it's dry, believe it or not. It's easy to split, very easy, it has a straight grain to it, so it's very easy to get straight down through the stems, like I said, to make spit roast and other things with. It's also native to Great Britain. The burning properties of this tree, it's good fuel even though it burns quickly, so it does burn quite fast. It's one of the softer trees, and you can actually get the very small branches when they're very dry, and they're very good for snapping off if you can find them, and they will help light the fire if you can't find any pine and other things like that. Now, the uses for this in bushcraft, it's suitable drill and half for friction fire lighting. We use this quite a bit as a drill and a half for friction fires, and they do work very, very well for it, so it is worth noting that hazel is good for that use. Um, basketry, obviously we use it for that as well, weaving baskets with a very, very thin bit. Um, you can't see any very thin bits in this because it's a big old tree, but you can see a few smaller stems coming off just over here. Now, here's a note to edible. Uh, they can also be flower substitute as well, and they're harvested in autumn. A fork branch is strong enough as improvised nutcracker, believe it or not, and even a fork branch on the hazel tree is even used to divine and find water. Diviners often use the forked branches. Don't think we want quite as big as that, but they do use these to find water allocated around in hidden spots. Believe it or not, the Northumbrian water still use diviners today. Even as, a, even as a massive corporate company, they'll use a man who walks down the street with divining rods to locate water that may have been buried, such as pipes, things like this. And then on the back of those rods, they will proceed to dig up the full area. You can also chew the end of a hazel nut twig until it frees. You can use it as a toothbrush. 
straight walking sticks can be obtained from the hazel. So if you're out and about guys in the woods and you do need a walking stick, the hazel tree is definitely the one I go for and uh, I will try and take a nice straight piece of hazel, a decent size, probably something along this size here. If you look over here, this guy, direct centre, this bit here, he would make a beautiful walking stick. There's a few there that would actually work as a nice walking stick. Right, that is the hazel tree. I hope you enjoyed that. I will do my best to try and present these trees the best I can. Obviously, I can't fit every single thing in about each tree. The videos will be simply just too long. But I hope you enjoyed these short videos all about British trees from the Great Isles of Britain. This here was what I call the Witch's Hazel. Thank you.